Hello and welcome to another Polestar Pilates Hour. As you're joining us today, we have some very special guests, Florent Jodon and Marianne Camarmon, who are joining us from France. We're super excited to have them with Petit Palats. Super good to have uh, Florence and, and Marion with us today. And we're going to get into some uh, good questions about working with children and learning how to work with children. They've certainly worked very hard to develop a, uh, a methodology of working with children that I am very excited to learn more from. So you're staying up at nighttime. What, what time is it there, Florence? It is uh, almost 9 p.m. Almost 9 p.m. around 9 p.m. That's what I figured. I think that's actually a good time for a lot of people in Europe join the webinar because yeah. they're done with their day. And they just they hop on. <laughs> yeah, just get ready to go to bed. Well, listen, we're super excited to have everybody joining us today. And this is a topic that is very exciting to me. I was just explaining to Florence and, and Marianne that um, this week we introduced a summer camp for children called the Movement Farm. And if I didn't have respect for you before this week, which I did, I have a lot more respect now after spending five days working with children in, uh, in the Movement Camp. So it's been a great, great thing. And I'm really excited to hear from you and know how you're doing. So before we get started on maybe sharing uh, specific things, what I'd like to do is take a quick survey of those that are with us. And just to have you go into our Mentimeter, I just have one slide today, not a whole lot. And it's just so that uh, Petit Palats and Polestar can get an idea of who's joining us and what your interest is. Because I can sort of we can gear the discussion towards the majority's interest. And while you're doing that, I'm going to start off asking a little bit of a question. And either of you could answer it. But I guess the big question right up in the start is what inspired you to want to work with children? I know you're both Pilates teachers, but what inspired you to want to work with children and Pilates? So first, um... Thank you, Brent, for inviting yeah. us uh, for this uh, webinar um, and giving us the chance to uh, introduce a little bit our, uh, our methodology. Um, so a quick uh, introduction uh, about the Petit Pilates, uh, which um, uh, we've created five years ago uh, yeah. with uh, Marion uh, to address uh, to kids a uh, new way of uh, uh, teaching because we were um, obviously working with adults and we had to totally reset our way of doing with, with the kids. Um, so everything started very um, naturally uh, with our own kids, definitely. As Pilates teacher, uh, the idea was to, uh, to experiment <laughs> with our own kids uh, a few positions and see how what we were enjoying ourselves could apply to them. Um, and uh, we definitely see the, the potential and the, the interest. And um, naturally, again, we uh, started to do some uh, summer camp with little groups. And slowly, um, naturally, we entered with uh, schools working directly in classes. Uh, so that's how we started, very, very uh, slowly. And school was uh, definitely the first intention uh, because um, uh, that's where the kids spend most of their life. Uh, and um, that's also where we saw the, also the interest uh, from school teachers. Uh, they had difficulties dealing with um, many uh, uh, Tense tension, uh, movement, uh, frustrations, uh, posture difficulties, even though for you know just writing and, and just set up yeah. <laughs> on the chair. Uh, so many difficulties also in the setup of the rooms. And uh, that's definitely interesting to see how Pilates enter into the room. Yeah. Now, can I ask how many children you have and, and uh, how old are they? So Marion, uh, um, you have um, 
Um, so you so have a, you mean ourselves uh, yeah. are all yeah. kids? Yeah, yourselves. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just getting the idea of the age group that you were thinking yeah. about when you got interested in working with your children. Yes. So yeah. well, since we worked uh, on kids five years ago, mine were only uh, seven. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the youngest one. Now there are six and twelve. Uh, and she now is in a teenage group for one and uh, uh, primary school for the other. Mm. Very but nice. you are with a baby. Yes, I am a new mother of a uh, 10 small months old baby girl. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. I, I always make, uh, it's not really a joke because it's true. Like in our house, in the living room, growing up, the kids had a trapeze table and a reformer in their living room. And so from the time they were, you know, a year old, they were climbing on Pilates equipment just thinking it was almost like a playground. So it had always been in their lives. And we had done, you know, certain experiments actually of things like, you know, always being on the floor instead of chairs and trying to have little competitions and play with body positions and mobility or, or strength and things that we could do with planks and, and uh, those kind of things. And now they're all grown ups, and I have a grandchild. But I do think that we as Pilates teachers have have an advantage of taking our young children and just hopefully introducing them to healthy movement styles. Now, one of the things that um, I'm curious about a little bit, and actually, let's see what the audience said on their on their thing. So um, I think we're looking and this was this is what I would have expected, um, Florence and, and Marianne, mm -hmm. is that people want to, they don't know how to. They don't have access. Uh, we really haven't been taught the tools in our Pilates training to be able to work with children. I think that's, yeah. I think that's very obvious here. And I, um, and I know that there's a lot of people that are online with us. And you notice um, that there's um, very, uh, very few who actually uh, work with children with special needs. We have one person that, in the audience today. So this sort of makes sense of like, there's this huge open space uh, for those who want to, and uh, but they need the training, they need the methodology, they need the pedagogy that is different from our original training. And that's where maybe I'd like to start is, let's start with your original trainings. And you have diverse trainings between the two of you. You bring a nice, you know, wide spectrum of Pilates teaching. And, you know, what are some of the challenges that you met very early on when you had the idea, let's teach this to children? Okay. Um, the challenges, actually, uh, we, took, um, we took it from another angle because uh, you may be afraid by kids. Yeah. That's something... Um, you may be afraid um, by um, their creativity or because they are just very uh, open to experience and they make you just uh, break uh, your plans. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we learned uh, uh, definitely. So before going into challenges, I would say before, if you want to work with kids is that you must love kids. Yeah. Um, I insist uh, on, on this because um, they are completely different. And, but we saw uh, a, a lot of uh, openness, a lot of, I mean, they are loyal compared to kids. We could compare yeah. them to, to adults. Um, and uh, their commitment, it's quite surprising. But we, we really see positive mm. uh, aspects working with them. They don't cheat, <laughs> no. if I may say. They, are, they don't cheat with emotions. Mm. And this can be really um, um, I mean, make you afraid of emotions. And the, the kids are uh, very spontaneous. Um, uh, so how to work and how to deal with uh, mm. emotions. Yeah. yeah. And just uh, children push us to um, simplify and sequence each step of explaining the movements. It's very different to adults. Just uh, the exactly. face. Uh, yeah. Just exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I noticed that. I noticed that this week, very particularly of just 
the literality of what I would say, where, you know, an adult would probably want to respect sort of my position as a Pilates teacher. And a child's like, what is it you want me to do? You know, and it's like very literal of, you know, the, the commands of try this or lay on your back or put your feet on the floor and not, no other things in between it for them to be able to understand it. And it really sharpens your cueing and your verbal cues mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with yes, their literalness. I mean, it's amazing how literal they are with, yeah. you know, um, especially when I, you know, and I like to use creative imagery, but, you know, I got a little creative the other day and, you know, they pretty much went off in La La Land being butterflies and things because I was talking about yeah. opening their knees and closing uh, like a butterfly. Mm -hmm. What, what are some of the challenges that you've come across in that differentiation between, you know, you mentioned some of this, you know, the fear we have sometimes of working as adults with children. Yeah. Um, what about the actual challenge of teaching children movement compared to teaching adults movement? Um. They are, they are yeah, yeah, yes, huh? yes, they are, they, are <laughs> they apply uh, the instructions. Yes, they are really following instructions. <laughs> um, nothing they are totally contrary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to adults, is uh, uh, they don't necessarily listen, as you said, they are not quiet at all. Mm -hmm. Um, they are real angels, yeah, but uh, in a way that's what we lack with them. Um, I mean. We, the main challenge is again we reset definitely yeah. whatever we uh, are doing with adults we do it differently doesn't yeah. mean that we do it uh, we do something else it's just that uh, we have in common uh, with adults the pilates, pilates method yeah mm. however the teaching pedagogy is not the same so the challenge we face if we have to give an example is yeah. Depending on the time we do uh, a class, for instance, at school, they are tired, okay? So when they are tired, they are less focused. Uh, if they are less focused, they can't just listen. And it emphasizes this phenomenon uh, if they are uh, at the end of the day. And there's many aspects that we have to deal with because they are, we are not under control of their um, uh, fatigue, of the reason of the day of uh, many aspects that impact their, again, their emotional, yeah. um, and they are not soldiers. They will just let it go. And uh, you have, I mean, to deal with a lot of communication, understanding, even though we have to put in place uh, a strict rules, uh, strict rituals, we'll talk about that later, but it's just, yeah, the level of, uh, uh, excitement that you can have, which is a challenge. Mm. Right, <laughs> and and obviously, there's a huge difference in ages. So you know, yeah. every know. every like one or two years, I'm noticing there's a significant difference in mm -hmm. you know how we as an adult could facilitate a positive mm -hmm. movement experience with our children. What are some things that you've noticed? And I noticed there's a question in here as well, wanting to work with young athletes that are 14 to 18, which is a pretty high level of attention and very different from a three-year-old or a five-year-old or yes. a two-year-old. What are some of the things that you've had to do to be able to work with different age groups uh, in, you know, maybe even in the same class? I've seen you teaching classes where in some of the videos where you do have, you know, four or five years age difference in the mm -hmm. class, how do you, um, you know, how do you perceive the age effect on movement and, and what are some of maybe cover some of your goals and objectives with the different age groups? What's appropriate for a three to five year old that, uh, you know, or what's appropriate for a nine to 10 year old that's not appropriate for a three to five year old? Maybe a better no, way of asking definitely. that. Uh, definitely the age group is key and we are defining age groups uh, relatively uh, as uh, the same as uh, in school. In school, yeah. So in France, for instance, we have what we call kindergarten from three to six. And then we go to a cycle, which is uh, 
um, which is elementary school. Mm. So it's like six to 10. And then we go to high school and then mm. it's more teenage, teenagers. So it's relative, relatively coherent as an age group. Um, but even though there's a gap between a three years old to a six years old, for sure. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, uh, the way we work with youngest, to give you an example, is more uh, around, um, I mean, they are not um, big listener. They are not speaking fluently anyway. So uh, they are um, for some more auditive, the mm -hmm. others are more visual. So for the youngest, we definitely work a whole lot on senses approach. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about senses, is um, we've developed tools as part of a pedagogy, uh, which relates to um, uh, tell a story of a movement mm -hmm. to, uh, to the, the youngest. And that's something mm -hmm. we can start with yes. before going into the movement right away is to keep them in a, a very creative, imaginary uh, body uh, body exploration through audio. And so we do, we podcast. We do podcasts about uh, stories, stories of movements. So we define the movements through our game. We talk yeah. about the Petit Pilates game. Can you, so, can you give an example of like a, a little story? Like it's not going to be very long. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, a very just short mm -hmm. in introduction. Yes. Uh, we can take one of our cards, let's say. Okay. This is yeah. a movement that we know in Pilates. Okay. It's a quadruped. Yep. Um, today, mm -hmm. Petit Pilates tells us the story of Maya the cat. Okay. She dreams of being the longest cat. Yeah. So we can start just by a story. A uh, story of a cat. The cat has a name because we yeah. write stories to our, our kids, to our kids, so they can just, oh, it's me. Okay, so they're more into, <laughs> into it then. Um, so before showing, we, we try them to listen. You know, the, the audio sense is the most developed uh, yeah. in the, I mean, in the yeah. uh, belly of a mother. It's definitely the sense that develops first. And we believe still that for the youngest, um, Audio is a very powerful uh, tool to make them um, captive, captivate them attention. And it's also a quiet time because there's something so, so something for us to to give a go back to a coherent group around one thing, a, co a common story. So yeah, we make them in a circle, for instance, we put a micro uh, and they listen to a story. So we avoid for now screens, huh? definitely. Uh, so audio, this kind of story, we use uh, definitely the metaphor. I mean, the yeah. metaphor is <laughs> the fundamental <laughs> uh, part of the method. Uh, a cat animal, yes. also we make them uh, become animals because they are not in comparison with um, character. And for youngest, yeah, a cat is very easy. And then for us as teachers, it's just to how we can uh, then play with the story. Yeah. Okay, so we can spend a, an hour, I mean, 45 minutes with the, the story of that cat and try to make them find like light. I mean, there's something very light, something very long, mm. something very stretched, something, yeah. And all about wording is important for them to understand and feel and think and imagine. Yeah. So we don't expect them after a podcast necessarily to do a perfect movement, mm -hmm. not at all. You see, this movement is really hard for the youngest because it's uh, asymmetric and the youngest, they just can't at that age, just leave the right arm and the left leg. I mean, it's quite hard. So. Yeah. If they understand something, you will see them move. Oh, okay, they may stretch one arm and one Try. leg. Trying experiment. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's making them go through the movements through audio and their imaginary um, uh, body. Uh, in yeah, I love it. I have as soon as you said telling the story, I got <laughs> goosebumps on my arms because you know storytelling <laughs> is so tribal and so fundamental to our upbringing and is often lost now. 
Um, you know, we don't have that, you know, what, what I felt when you said that is I was the child sitting there and you're telling me the story about Mia the cat. And I am now using my imagination yes. to yeah. be Mia the cat, right? And, and you know, this is, this is a very fundamental uh, aspect of learning. We, we had a special guest on a couple of weeks ago that specializes in chronic pain. And his whole specialty is in storytelling. And yeah. even to adults to be able to tell a story that they could relate to and understand this is the nature of their pain. Where here we're saying this is the nature of movement uh, mm -hmm. to do that. I think that's just amazing. And that's certainly, um, you know, and I just, again, I'm applying everything in my head of what I've experienced the last four days. I haven't been around this many kids for a long time. And just realizing that the storytelling is when we sit down at the beginning of the morning, we sit in a circle on the ground. And that I think is one of their favorite times, even before we start moving, is yeah. just having a little discussion. And I think it needs to be more storytelling than discussion even. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, I wanna move a little bit into Petite Palats. I think that there's, you know, uh, I, I want everybody that's listening to know that this was not a product that mm -hmm. uh, Florence and Marin made up overnight. It wasn't like they just said, oh, let's teach our, you know, classical and Polestar Pilates to children. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, <clears throat> I want you to exp express a little bit about what you had to go through with developing the pedagogy, with you know, the other professionals that you invited into developing this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you came up with a product, right? And the product's amazing, but I'm, all, I'm more interested in the five years of developing this product and, you know, the things that worked, the things that didn't work and who was able to help you, you know, solve some of those challenges that you invited in, you know, to a very proprietary methodology. I think this is a very unique methodology. And as we were talking about before the program started, was the idea that it is not, a, the, the Pilates we could say applies to, to everybody, right? The Pilates does. Um, the way that we teach it, the methodology or the pedagogy of working with children, um, and particularly teaching movement to young children, mm -hmm is a very unique methodology. And that's what I'd like you to extrapolate a little bit right now and share with us, you know, what are some of the things that you had to do, you know, to be able to create this methodology? I may just um, uh, remind uh, something that is important as most of us may be uh, into Pilates as a uh, uh, teachers, trainers, educators, or just uh, uh, learners, is um, with adults, again, as we said, uh, we expect or we, we look for not perfection, but alignment, uh, core, uh, coordination. coordination, all our fundamentals, uh, like Polestar, you know, and the Pilates method fundamentals, we have them in common. But again, teaching to kids is just to, uh, the requirements is, is part of our pedagogy, definitely. Uh, but the level of postural precision, um, we allow ourselves just not to say that we, we revise them downwards. You know, we mm -hmm. want the kids to experiment, go, go ahead. So. We put perfection, alignment, fundamentals, for a, a few of them more in the yeah. background, but definitely we may put some of them more on the front line. <laughs> uh, we give uh, also like a fundamental for us is the breathing, you know? Yeah. Um, everything for us starts by breathing, by the way, yeah. because uh, um, if we teach them how to breathe, um, the movements will follow. So we start everything, and any session we started with breathing, with respiratory cohesion kind of tactics, with some kind of tools to expand and, you know, inhale, exhale. So it's like an imaginary ball that makes them take a time to stop and focus and inhale and exhale. So the breathing is, for instance, one of the 
the, the main key we found to uh, also bring back a coherent uh, group. And again, also the excitement that we've mentioned at the beginning to bring it like calm down. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a ritual also for each session. Um, so yeah, especially for the youngest, the posture requirement comes uh, with age, I would say. And I, will, I really, uh, it's, it's important to say, okay, with a teenager, we will not have the same expectations, uh, to be really clear. And, um, and uh, the method is really a more uh, a teaching method than a Pilates a method. Okay. Yes. And learning Pilates for children is done through um, experimentation and autonomy. It's two words, very, very, very mm -hmm. important for us experimentation, autonomy, and go. Uh, creativity is uh, very, very, very sensitive. So the, the challenges we've been facing is more, we often go through like, okay, let's go uh, experiment. And, and the, the first flash was, okay, let's reset. But then um, we did it actually as a laboratory of research, yeah. instead of uh, being totally lost, to be honest. So our initial desire is, okay, we want to make children moving. That's yeah. our plain purpose. motion. Okay, plain motion. Yeah. And so we've set up uh, some tools, but then I mean, our main focus was to to say, okay, we st we start with some pilot schools. Uh, we've selected some pilot schools with whom we have set up a work uh, a, a work laboratory, and so we work with teachers and children. Yeah. Okay. And we actually ask the questions directly to the teachers. What's your problems? And we did the same with parents. What the issues you may face? Because that's actually very kids-oriented strategy. It's not that we are working with kids like, okay, we see how they are. But we, we may focus on more specific uh, problematic at school and at home, and they're pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, at school, um, doing workshops, we spend a lot of time in the class to observe the way kids are moving, the way the kids are seated. Um, the, 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 exactly. Uh, it reflected also yeah. some hyperactivities, kind of. Uh, the posture. Posture, definitely. Um, uh, but the, the teachers and the, even, yeah, the school teachers, they were yeah. just saying, okay, we face some emotion issues like uh, agitation, um, the stress also before, yeah. even at high school, before an exam, uh, the posture of teenagers is really complicated to change. Uh, and uh, it starts even though at elementary school. And it's interesting to see how the writing and yeah. posture, how we can help um, the reading, the working uh, also. Uh, posture. So observations, workshops is so we took it from a you know, more scientific kind of, uh, we, instead of being just in front of all the issues, we, we started with like, how can we find e uh, answers to yeah. those issues by uh, testing uh, uh, our method. Okay, we have our game. So we'll, of course, work first with our cards, but we but, play yeah. different rules games depending on uh, problematics, problematics. Mm -hmm. definitely. I, I want to go back to um, a couple of things that you mentioned, Florence. Um, one is, you know, you, you know, I love science. You know, I love research. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the, you know, evidence-based. And what I really appreciate that the two of you did is to do a needs assessment and to do an observation and not to make assumptions Mm -hmm. of what we have is what you need yes versus what do you need what do mm -hmm. you see as your challenges can we customize our tools and modify them to be able to work and meet the objectives of those needs and this is something where we we often talk about accessibility right we were talking a little bit about accessibility before making pilates accessible to everyone and something in Polestar that runs very deep. And we've talked about this from more of individuals with pathologies and psychological fears and adults, primarily in adults, 
of making things available and knowing that we have to do the assessment and the observation and really find out what is it that they want to participate in life and what are they, what of those activities are they not able to do that allows them to participate in their life? So two people the same age, same gender, same everything could have very, very different wants and needs and perceptions. And so being able to go in and observe, being able to ask those that are working with them seven, eight hours a day, like the teachers in particular, even more so than the parents. I think that's the most admirable thing is, is realizing what is their body doing six to eight hours of the day? You know, they're sleeping seven, eight hours a day. So six to eight hours, that's a third of the day that is occupied. And if they're not engaged in some kind of external sport or activity, that's, that's it. You know, they're going to be sitting on a couch or behind a desk or something like that. we got a couple questions that have come in. I'm sure you've seen them come up. And the first one from Miriam, maybe one of you could address that, that comment from her. And, and, you know, of course, these are available. These are things available to them. Was it lovely? Okay. Um, Dubai then. <laughs> See yeah. what happens? You know? that was, I think that was. I think I think Florence, that was my first question to you too. I want to buy the cards. I want the cards. <laughs> I want the training too, but I want the cards. Wow. So yes, we will give you links to education. Do you want a bit more of an explanation about the cards? Yeah, maybe. Yes, okay. please. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've developed um, this little one, which is a, a, a pocket format. Okay. Um, this pocket format, we made it because it's uh, easy to take for little ones. And it is uh, a family game. That's important to mention, but yeah. it's not just a family game, it's a seventh family game movements or seven movements, seven family game movements. Um, it, we've actually um, created seven families uh, with a very, very nice specificity related to, um, I would say, specific body. Uh, uh strengths uh so we for instance have a stone core family stone core family so we could for instance if you know some of them for sure we have the push-up the hundreds the roll-up so these are for instance movements that are pretty hard actually <laughs> for kids um i'll give you some examples you know the little press push up, yeah yeah well i like the balloon so this is a quite strong one, uh, which is the stone core. So it's a gorilla family. Huh? Everything is like stone abdominals, kind of. Um, with this family, um, um, uh, well, that's the strength, definitely. Well, we have another family, which is about mobility. Wind so the wind vane family. family. So we'll see any movements that applies to rotation, you know, so the leg Twist. circle. Yep, circle. We've got um, this one, the, the, the soul. The soul. Yeah, the soul, for instance. Uh -huh. Okay. These are quite nice to do. Thank the spine so twist. Good. Yeah. Yeah, mobility. Yeah, yeah the mobility. Uh, we've got much more, obviously. Maybe in this format, it's better for you. Mm -hmm. from, <laughs> this is, is a rolling ball family. Yeah, just all the movements uh, with oh, yeah. a roundness. Yes, uh, maybe this rolling like a ball. Uh -huh. Yeah, just. I needed these today. These are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. Or, uh, another, uh, the bamboo. Roll down. Your name is Carl. Carl the Bamboo. <laughs> no. yeah. uh, we can go through most of them. So we have the head down family. 
this is the shoulder bridge, Juliette, yeah. which shows the giraffe because she suffered from her neck. Neck pain. <laughs> Roll over, you know, it's yes. easy. Yeah. I mean, we have many, many, the bicycle. Yeah. yeah, that's also something quite fun. What you may have noticed is uh, to make it accessible and easy to families. So a first seven family game is quite, I mean, it's in France, I think it's all over the world. Yeah. It's a game that all the kids use at any age, even family adults play with the kids, yes. with the grandmother, grandfather, grand, anyone can play with. Uh, we saw it quite it, just interesting um, in a way, um, uh, we've got seven families and seven members per yeah. families, important to say. So we have uh, mm -hmm. the little ones, for instance, for instance, this one is the youngest of the family, you know? Giraffe, yeah, the bridge. Can do it. Yeah. I, so I, I, I noticed on there too, um, is it the spectrum, the dots mm -hmm. on the right side, the difficulty? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's, um, so usually cool. the youngest is pretty easy. Yeah, one um, and two. Then we have uh, the other. an older kid. I mean, it's easy yeah. for the youngest, but uh, <laughs> if an adult do it, uh, we put it a uh, uh, three on, out of five because yeah. it's quite um, yeah. complex. Okay. If we have then uh, the teenager, he can just lift up to the bicycle, but it's pretty hard as well, movement. And then we've integrated the mother and father. Yeah. Oh, the father, you can really do. Uh, yeah. This is quite crew. nice. The cross crew. Really? Yeah. yeah. We've got also the control balance. The mother, she's really yes. fit. Yeah. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> then we have the grandparents. <laughs> but the grandmother is also fit because she did Pilates all her life. Yeah. <laughs> and the grandfather, it's a, a bit maybe less supple. So we uh... put it. Uh, <laughs> the head down yeah well that's a playful game so all the family yeah. can play all the family is into it level of difficulties we have also kind of sequences, sequences. of movements yes okay, sorry. maybe there yeah is. we prefer these but i'm i'm now the grandfather yeah. france Yes. <laughs> I'm the grandfather in the card game. So <laughs> this is exciting. Less. <laughs> it's key. No, but anyway, it's a playful game that everybody can play with. Uh, playing seven family games, we changed the rules. So as we mentioned, for the youngest, we may start with a very like basic movement, like a difficulty. Um, one, two. This one, for instance, they love the kids, you know, yeah. the head down movement. We can spend some time on, on one movement. For the youngest is, okay, it can start with a podcast. Uh, we can then um, uh, start with uh, the, hmm? the, 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 the visual. We can yeah. show them the yeah. cards yeah. and they just uh, reflect like a mirror. Yeah. We obviously show them, okay? Yeah. We can just play with a counting system. We can even add an accessory, where to place the accessory. We can then make slowly play by groups of two and they actually came face to face. Uh, I mean, there's different rules that applies for the youngest and then step by step on a session two or three, we can just do then two cards, then three cards, and then we play and we build a sequence. Okay, so that's the way we play yeah. with. But furthermore for them more and more because oh, we, we have so many things to mm -hmm. say but no. the, game, the game is um when we talk about the youngest is quite useful because the youngest we still talk about psychomotricity yes. uh we play a lot with um placement of accessory and cards they can yeah. just discover the card okay this they discover the card they love it's, it's a mystery okay yeah. oh i can do this okay they do and then we can make just a little path yeah and actually our rooms are usually like psychometricity kind of pass and organization which at some levels we play some cards but this we do after some time because in the first we'll ask them to just learn the card and then we can place it into that's right 
a path. Okay, so that's for the youngest. Well, you know, you know, it's interesting yeah. here again is Joseph Pilates, you know, his saying where if people practiced entrology every day, there'd be no need for hospitals, prisons, or insane asylums. And the question that's up on the board right now from Adriana is sort of dealing with postural issues of teenagers, which you already mentioned. And the reality is, you know, one of our objectives, all of us that are listening today as Pilates teachers, is to provide um, ample movement experiences and postural awareness. Joe talked a lot about confidence and, you know, how being able to breathe well and being able to cleanse our bodies and to move. He, he wasn't talking about going to a Pilates class every day. He was talking about exactly what you're showing right now is, can you imagine if even one out of 10 families was playing this game a couple times a week? Can you imagine if yes, the children <laughs> had it in their schools, right? Yes, Where the yes. teacher said, hey, we're gonna play a little movement game because I can see you're getting a little rowdy and you've lost mm -hmm. your attention. Exactly. Let's do this. And, you know, and then having it in our clinics where we're working with children with cognitive disorders and children with behavior disorders and children with disabilities and impairments. So these are, I want everybody to understand that I, I think what you're tapping into is far more than pediatric or children-based Pilates, but it is making something accessible that we all believe deeply in. I don't think there's anybody on this webinar that doesn't believe that we should be aware and moving our bodies on a regular basis. The question is, how do we get children interested? How do we get the tribe to move together? The tribe meaning grandma and grandpa down to the baby. I may add something is um, we have, for instance, also individual uh, kids that we are following. Uh, that may have a pathology uh, like a neurofibromatous or yeah, like more really like uh, scoliosis, but more than mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it can become boring for this kid just to yeah. come alone. And what we love is that uh, we invite the parents to participate. Yeah. <laughs> That's very key. With the, with the game, I mean, the kids say, oh, daddy or mommy, he doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> but at least we see the this kid that we follow since a couple of years now is, you know how to place his breathing, even though the movement is not perfect. You yeah. do it its own way, and you see also the 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 the, the implication. I mean, uh, uh, of of father or, or mother, and and we try to to really make them enter into the process. That's really key. What we forgot to say with the game is we changed the rule. Yeah. A family game is just okay if I say. Yeah um okay let's pick uh you got this family yeah. i say okay in the win win family marion um can i have uh can i have the soul yeah i check yeah i want a card but then i have to do the movement <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's quite tiring okay so i do the movement but then marion she will say okay yeah so um, you have the, the soul and the Okay, so she pick up back my car, oh. we do it again. And uh, as we you know, the family game is to, I mean, to have all the family members. But at the end, when you have all the family, you have yeah. also to practice the full family, <laughs> which is quite oh. tiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is the simple way to play. If we go to make it more teenagers, yeah. Uh, we have like team building kind of sessions. We make groups. And then, um, I mean, they, they are super fast. Teenagers. Yeah. You know, they know, they remember the cards, blah, blah. So it goes pretty fast. Okay. We can say stop. We stop the game and we introduce a challenge. Challenge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have different challenges, different levels. Yeah. Let's say beginners. Okay, we may have uh, teenagers that may not never have uh, do, done Pilates before, but we just say, okay, um, do you remember the head down family? Okay, do the exercise of your choice from the head down family. Okay, right. to think, okay, they do the practice, the they, they it's a rapid, blah, blah. it's, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah, fun yeah, to yeah, see yeah, what yeah, this, fast, they fast. do, blah, blah, and we say no, 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 and they challenge and they help each other and, 
And the one who won, we say, okay, you won. And then it starts with you again and we play again. So we have several like 50 cards. Yeah. Challenge. Challenge. If I pick up the, this is the kit. You guys are so smart. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, but this is a kind of flash game yeah. uh, cards. Um, okay, we can do it very playful, very yeah. fun, but at the same time, it's very serious. Thing. Yeah. We are not going to teach you how to um, do Pilates. I mean, if you have to place better the teenager, yeah. if you have to, I mean, correct a line and everything, that's part of the game. Brilliant. We'll say, we will help them, we'll correct them, we do it. At, but at the same time, they're really excited to. Yeah to do the movements and to win, and to, and to win <laughs> definitely. They are the masters of the games. And as part of the challenges, uh, we um, have challenges that are, okay, you pick up, for instance, one card in each of the, uh, of the, 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 the friends. They, they pick, uh, one, one of them pick five cards. And we ask them, do a sequence. How to organize your cards uh, to make it together. Yeah. I mean, you're actually teaching them how to become Pilates teachers when you exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are, they are becoming yeah. masters of the game. Transitions and builds and all yeah. those we've we've been teached yeah how to organize a, a start which is slow going core and coming back to lower and they, they are not yeah. very deep. I mean they know how to start yeah. with something. Uh, but the experiential uh, part of this is is phenomenal um time is going by very yes. quickly yeah so, I think so just yeah um, what i want to do is we have some pictures and we have a video that you shared with us that i want to share with the audience as well and um michelle made a comment and i'm sure that i, I hope that we've answered that um you know i think that the gamification and the mastery seem to be the biggest goals for the teenagers right i mean it's they want to they want to master the game they want to win the game and when they're with their peers they're much more interested um, at that age group to be able to collaborate with their peers and to, to be able to win the game or to laugh and to have fun together as they have that experience and and i love the idea of challenging them to to play with sequences i mean we need that for our education program right i mean we need that for our teachers that are going through training to be able to say, here's five exercises, build a sequence, build a transition. It's great for you. So I have just one little one, which is special, and I'm sure you will be happy to have that. There's anatomy. I mean, anatomy, it's not a school program. No. It's not on a curriculum. No. 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 Or very little also in France. Yeah. So yeah, we've got also challenge and unlimited challenges, which are okay. If we saw, talk about a uh, um, hundred, for instance, a hundred position exercise for us, it's the stone core family. We can ask them and we can spend time interacting. It's not just movement, mm -hmm. it's interacting. Which muscle do you use the most? And you can also teach them what's the powerhouse. I mean, we are educators ourselves, so we, we should be able to say, okay, we engage mm -hmm. abdominals and you know, obliques, obliques and etc et and uh, more, more and more they, they learn about anatomy as well mm -hmm. so that's where we enter into schools yes yeah. so, so just point. let's let's do this let's jump into melissa can you um bring the slides back up and then i'll just have you explain and tell her when to change the slides so we sort of talked about them some of them we can move a little quicker others you can spend a little more time on them and while you're doing that i mean again i want to bring out the point that Petit Pilates is looked at um, family, looked at schools, and looked at studio uh, interventions with Pilates uh, for children and families. And I think it's important to understand the crossover that's so impressive that you've done as we look at these cards and just thinking that this is something that a family could do, which could be as, as small as uh, you know a mother and a child or a whole family and cousins getting together for a little reunion or a dinner on Sunday um, <laughs> to, to school and school's a biggie man if we can break into the school system we are way ahead of the game and then lastly is when they actually come into the studio can we create something fun for children to come into the studio sort of like what we're creating here in the movement farm 
is the kids are coming in and they're tying it right in with things like climbing trees and you know doing things outside as well as what we're doing inside with the, the movement. So your turn. Tell us a little bit about uh, anything that we haven't heard about on these cards. It's the family cards. Anything you want to add to that, Florence or Mafia? Yes, we always have something to yeah. add. Uh, <laughs> the, the cards are actually easy to, to do whatever we want, wherever we want for all, without any, I mean, much material or accessory. That's one thing. Mm. It's also very accessible. Um, if we are more into like a studio or camp or educational kind of, uh, I mean, that's interesting to see. So we work a lot with um, some of brands, uh, accessories to see how we can adapt them mm. to kids' anatomy because it's sometimes everything is made for kids. Um, yeah, this is a picture of our <laughs> training online. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if, if I can talk about this picture, uh, yes, we, yeah, yeah, we do, um, online, uh, training for sure for making it accessible from everywhere in the world. Um, uh, as you see, but we have this uh, huge pedagogical kit, uh, which we go through with, the uh, anatomy. These are actually an, an anatomy, uh, plank, plank, which is part of the pedagogy kit. Uh, which actually is just the minimum essentials that we expect from the kids to know, to practice. They don't need to be experts in anatomy, but they should know their um, shoulders, uh, uh, pelvic, uh, muscles. chains, muscles, um, the, the anterior posterior muscles, chains, or yeah, the rest of them in the breathing. Uh, also some kind of, you know, um, Antagonist, uh, agonist. Antagonist. Uh, uh, of course, we focus also on the abdominals. Uh, I mean, the the, the, the core, the, the, the powerhouse. Uh, but we spend a lot of time also on the topic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the online training is uh, something we do a lot, but we are also going into more presential, more and more. Uh, this is actually something we did online because of the COVID. Yeah. Um, and it's also helping a lot of, uh, uh, to, I mean, uh, attendees to to access from where they are. Uh, but yeah, we actually um, for now go uh, around France yeah. and Switzerland soon, uh, hopefully in the US, <laughs> and uh, to really like, expand uh, definitely the the training. Mm. Yeah, very good. Let's take a look at the next slide. <laughs> well, these are just examples of. <laughs> yeah. How uh, kids just memorize uh, visually the cards. Um, yeah. uh, they pick cards. They pick cards. They, they again by uh, groups. Try. They do uh, a sequence. You see, they kind of organize what is logical to put first and next. And uh, that's really nice to to making groups yeah. uh, with I would say more um, elementary school kind yeah. of, and of course teenagers. Yeah. This is an elementary school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question. Just remind me when you're when we're done here about the education for the different levels, from educating parents and families to school teachers to actual professional teachers. So we'll come back to that. But let's take a look at the next one. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we enter classes. Uh, you see, we are with teachers. Um, that's also a way for for us to to teach to to them how to. Uh, memorize again, uh, sequences. sequences, families, explain them what are they uh, about and introducing also um, the stories, uh, the characters, etc. So that's something kind of, as you mentioned, you know, if we enter the class, it would be wonderful to have the rituals putting in place. If a kid mm. needs um, I'd say uh, to move, we can say, okay, time for you to pick up a card and uh, do movement. We've, I haven't really mentioned about that, but the discharge of yeah. movement is really key. And what we are working with schools is um, how to implement rituals, proprioception rituals into the Breathing. class. Um, is, uh, of course, the playground outside is one thing, but they're more excited than ever when they come back. Uh, in the class, so we need to implement a, like a coherent group movement, which is including breathing and let's say two to three movements 
and then we go back to work. So yeah, our uh, intention is to work on concentration, uh, group, uh, also a focus on the body um, uh, parts, uh, and um, like going back to a to a focus in the class. That's definitely something. I mean, the the the, the teachers uh, in France they have the role of being also a gym uh, teachers. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, not very easy for them because they have to get trained by themselves. So that's where we come in because we give them some tools, and they have actually to 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 sequence the day with uh, several time uh, in the class several times in the gym etc so we bring them a routine uh, yeah. even more than that that can apply during the day and the routine is really something that kids needs yeah. uh, do it themselves and for instance teenagers we have actually at the at the beginning of next september uh, a coherence a week to build in yeah. And our objective is to make them create their routine for the week, for the 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 the, the, the year. So they build themselves. They will pick whatever they will imply every day before starting the day. Oh, nice. nice. Okay. So that's something we we want them to be master um, in, in control of. And uh, they are the one. And what's so important about this too? And I just had a deja vu with us on the screen, but the importance of having such a well-rounded, like the cards and the program, they have to represent a well-rounded whole body movement experience in their sequence. That's And that's really what Joseph Pilates was talking about okay. is you do whole body contrology exercises in your sequence every day. You're mm -hmm. overcoming things that would be related to slouched posture. You're overcoming things that would be related to loss of dorsiflexion in your ankles, et cetera, et cetera. So, you, know. you see whatever we can play with them. I was mentioning. Yeah, so no, I'm digging it. I, we were playing Bingo. with the oohs. <laughs> we were playing with the oohs today. We had them yeah. pretending they were surfing, standing on the oohs and yeah. working on balance. So it was perfect. I want to show the video real quick. And then I have one final question for us. And I pray that we, we use can. The AMAC. We haven't mentioned. We use the AMAC. Yeah. yeah. Because actually, Marion is really trained at fly, uh, anti gravity fly in New York. Oh, yeah. And actually, we are developing also um, Property, fly yeah. Pilates that will come very soon. So that'll be, another, be that'll be another fast. interview. That'll be another interview. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a huge, uh, a huge, uh, actually, in summer camp, we do it <laughs> uh, with the AMAC. Mm. Amazing. Let's take a look at this video. Um, the video always speaks for itself. I've watched it a hundred times. Yeah, we can add some comments anyway. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but but again, said it's it's been designed yes in contact with kids uh, in our daily practice uh, at school from primary to secondary school. Um, so it's specialized in children Pilates. We set up additional training for professionals who wish to broaden their skills. And uh, it's a game around which uh, we feed an ecosystem uh, of educational tools. So we include podcasts, we to include something we haven't mentioned. We have activity books, we are building programs and vocational training. Yes. And under a small Pilates Academy, we haven't mentioned that too. So uh, to make it really accessible to all, we've actually just launched uh, this month the Petit Pilates Academy. Okay. Uh, to which everyone can subscribe so we can from home listen to the to the stories yeah. also and follow some programs uh etc i mean everybody's question is the same that we're seeing coming up here right they want okay. to do the training <laughs> they want to have the cards they want to learn more okay. um we'll definitely give you information i saw that uh samuel went to the website and was mentioning the website so certainly go there, sign up for the any way that you can follow uh, Marion and Florence in their endeavors. We certainly support you from Polestar. We're very excited about the work that you're doing. Is there any last thing that you'd want to share with the audience today about Petit um, Yes, because we have so many plans going on. Yeah. Um, as the game is really some uh, uh, of a big interest, 
we are uh, doing a crowdfunding uh, campaign. campaign end of September yeah. with the pocket format. This little ones because that's the little one missing online. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, that's actually uh, where we we will start with. But anyway, our plans is to expand, as we said, uh, um, internationally and actually train more um, educators. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so for now we do training, vocational yeah. training, but then yeah, going further, so that definitely we can enter new markets. Um, because I think we've opened a bit, a yes. big gate. You you really have, you really have, and I want you to know that you know we would love to collaborate with you at any level that you see fit to be able to ex you know extrapolate the the education and. You know, we're, we've been passionate about children for a long time and just looking for the right partners and, and products and collaborators to be able to support it and get it out there. I think it's such a, you've made it so accessible. Mm -hmm. And I want to congratulate you for Thank doing you. amazing work. You've really made it accessible, not just to children, but to the family. Um, <laughs> Joseph, do Pilates, it, yeah. <laughs> Joseph Pilates would be very proud of you for making something that could be, you know, so many people that I had a, a questionnaire one time asking people if they thought that um, it would still be Pilates if it wasn't with a certified Pilates teacher in a studio. And I'm like, of course it is. Joe wanted us doing contrology exercises every day of our life. The whole idea is do your mat work at home uh, on a daily basis, and it will prevent a lot of unwanted movement pathologies and injuries. It'll make us happier. It'll build our confidence. And that that's what our children need today. Like I'm working with these kids and realizing I've always worked with children, you know, through church and through community. And what I realize is that today, more than ever, they are not having this type of play, movement, socialization that the two of you are presenting here and i just want to again commend you thank you so much i know we're out of thank time you. i could talk to you for hours uh, yeah, so thank, thank you, you so much for your time <laughs> thank today you. and for your vision very important in the police community you have our support and uh got a couple things just as an announcement for everybody you'll see on the post-production any links and things that um uh, Petit Palats wants to be shared, they'll be on the post-production. And we encourage you to support them any way that you can. Uh, we have a lot of education, continued education coming up in the near future. You can just go to Polestar Pilates. Uh, we had um, a, have a workshop that is virtual coming up that has to do with, uh, basically it's sitting as the new smoking, but it's looking at how do we get people to move. How do we do this, which ties directly into what we've been talking about today with our children. And that's coming up very soon. And that is virtual. We'll be making that available. Anybody coming from the webinar gets a significant discount. You'll see that in the post-production. And uh, please share it, share it with your clients. They also get a bigger discount because they're not getting CEUs or credits. They just need to learn how to avoid sitting all day long. So with that being said, everybody be kind. Uh, it's a good day to have a good day, and we'll see you next week at the Polestar Pilates Hour. Thank you, Florence and Marianne. Thank you, Pleasure, as always. Look forward to the next time. Yeah, yes. thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.